So, Miro, the U.S. is close to working out a new trade deal with Mexico and possibly Canada, which would potentially replace NAFTA, which President Trump has repeatedly referred to as a bad deal for the U.S. Who stands to benefit? At this point, depending on what happens with Canada, the benef people who benefit are the U.S. auto companies and part suppliers because supply chain doesn't change. That's a big relief to them. Um, Mexican workers and plants are reasonably well protected. And then in the United States, the winners are uh, auto workers in the South because they're not unionized and their cost per hour is fairly low because 40 percent of the deal requires you to produce cars and plants that where workers earn $16 an hour at a minimum. The losers are potentially uh, auto plants where workers are unionized in, the, in Michigan, Ohio, and, and Wisconsin, where their labor rates are much higher. Also, consumers are losers because the way the deal is structured, it's going to drive the cost of the, of the price of a car up because it requires local steel to be used, and domestic steel, steel is much more expensive than imported steel. Now, analysts believe, moving on, that the economy will remain strong in the near future, and they're thinking this, um, attributing this to consumer confidence. What do the numbers show? Consumer confidence is very important. Uh, so we are at a 18-year high in consumer confidence at a rating of 134, and confidence has really grown in the last 12 months. However, when you really look at the data, there's a little bit of a worrying part because we're at a place where we were just before the, the, the dot-com collapse, where ex current situation is rated really high, but expectations are re rated really low. This is the biggest gap in over 20 years. And so what happens now is that if you look at it, people were buying houses, cars, appliances, and if you look at the last three months, people are not buying houses, they're not buying cars, real wages are declining. So all the positives of, of the positive economy are not working for individuals. And what's worse, there was a study that was out uh, earlier in the week by the um, Hudson Institute, and they noted that last year, 40% of Americans could not meet their basic needs, paying rent, healthcare costs, utilities, or food costs. So it's a mixed news. So on the one level, it's very positive because we've had momentum, but the momentum going forward could be at risk. So moving over to Uber, the company is making news this week because it's announced that it's getting in the scooter and bike business. What do we know about that? You know, they, they bought a company called Jump Bike. Uh, it's a very crowded space. There's a lot of uh, well-funded startups that are worth over a billion dollars, like Bike Ride and, and Lime, which has scooters in San Diego. But right now, cities are really nervous. They got burned by the rideshare phenomenon. They weren't ready. So they're really looking at um, the situation with scooters. So if, you know, for, if you've been in downtown San Diego, you see these scooters all over the street. And what they're finding is that there's a lot of vandalism. Uh, people cut the brake cables. People break them in half. So they're trying to figure out a way to make sure that it's a great way of transportation in urban areas. And so companies are kind of trying to figure this out. And finally, it is the Friday before Labor Day weekend, and it could be a record breaker for air travel. Is this another sign of consumer confidence? You know, again, it's looking a little bit backwards. Um, yes, it, it is, um, because in the first half of the year, airline tickets went down 4%. Um, consumers had more money in their pocket with the tax cuts. All great stuff. So when they were planning their trips for Labor Day, we have almost 17 million people traveling by air, which is an increase of 5%. What people have to worry about for the next few months as they're planning their holiday travel is that uh, the airlines have seen a 30% increase in their fuel costs, a 6% increase in their labor costs, and ticket prices for airline travel are going to increase substantially in the fourth quarter. So it's good to book now because on Monday, JetBlue announced that they were increasing their baggage fees by $5 and their change fees and cancellations fees by $50, and every airline is expected to follow suit um, in the next week or two. So book right away. Book thanks right for away. talking with us. Mira Kopik, thanks for joining us. Marketing lecturer with SDSU. Happy Labor Day. Thank you.